Hello, in this video, I want to continue talking about how we can deepen learning during remote learning. Um, and this time looking at how we can use scaffolding and how we can remove it. We mentioned this in the last video and scaffolding and its removal featured in both our ability to increase student independence and to entice them into making more sophisticated work. So I want to start by discussing the importance of examples. Examples guide students to the rules or the steps behind a concept or a process. So these are a really important way of showing students how to do something successfully. To do this, we should provide several examples to reinforce the key idea and attempt to move from simple examples to more complicated ones. So maybe adding an extra feature or dimension to the work you're expecting uh, as you move through them. Now, examples really do help turn an, an idea into a concrete, real thing for students. Um, if we start with a definition, that can be really rather abstract and you need to be quite knowledgeable in that idea before the definition becomes particularly useful to you. However, you might want to have some points where you have a definition and ask students to work from that definition to generate examples themselves. Examples and non-examples can also be paired um, so that the differences can be discriminated and the key features emphasised in the concept that you're teaching. So non-examples are an important part of this too. So this is from my teaching this last week. I just simply drew a table and asked students to uh, give me an example of either a solute, a solvent or a solution. And I just noted them down as the students suggested them. Um, it's okay if a student says, um, like for example, salt is a solvent, even if they get the idea wrong, as part of that conversation, it's okay to correct them and say, oh, no, no, that's actually a solute. And what I found is, is when students have got one, subsequent ones will then follow. So that idea, without even defining a solute, the students will then see what those features are within that particular material. So once I've got a few examples, I can then talk about what the definition definition is and then I can introduce and ask for a non-example um, so the students came up with chalk would be an example a non-example of a solute so using worked examples uh, are really important because holes are better remembered than the parts um, students get to see the whole idea and are not kind of struggling and being overloaded with too much information that they have to pull together themselves. It's sat together. So word examples uh, or examples are an effective way of allowing students to see what the problem is or the concept is uh, alongside the steps of the solutions. And I've got a nice example I can show you in a moment on that. That has a big impact on the student's cognitive load um, and reduces it. Um, and allows the student to generate a schema uh, or a solution in their heads. And that is what is going to form the scaffolding for subsequent work. Because contrast that with the kind of traditional framework style scaffold, which I guess the word scaffold suggests, which basically gets the students to think about the individual parts in an attempt to see the whole. All right. So what I'm suggesting here is that an exemplar paragraph is more useful than the writing frame. Our job amongst this is to break down the work example so the structure becomes clear to the students within the work and help them to understand the task in fine detail. That's where we need to head. Um, an ideal way of doing this is making our own thinking visible to our students. Why we chose a particular word or a particular strategy is an important part of this teaching. So the steps to using word examples with students is to provide a full example of what you want the students to do. 
Um, if I was doing something that is writing, I would choose a similar topic rather than the one I wanted to have the students write about. So that avoids them just merely copying the work that you've provided. Um, you should also provide many tasks for the students to then practice independently following that. And that's particularly important for things like calculations. The best practice here is to help the students unpick the qualities themselves first before then revealing your own thinking behind it. Um, and then you provide something tangible in terms of steps or a process the students can then work from. So here's an example um, of just some writing. The students were at first asked to um, work out which were the articles, nouns, uh, and prepositions. And it was basically a way of just allowing the students to look at the structure of the writing in a bit of detail. But then it led to a conversation about um, how do scientists write? Um, you know, what person is it written in? Um, is there a topic sentence? Um, and that discussion was summarized here. Um, and these are what the students had noticed. However, it is okay at this point for the teacher to tell students or show them within the example something that they have missed. So, you know, this is not just a student generated list of ideas that you want in the work. You can tell them and show them what it would look like. Okay. Um, and that is a, a key part of this teaching strategy. Uh, here's a really nice example to show um, that that tangible next uh, set of steps. So it's a calculation in physics. Calculation steps are all shown within the worked example, but then the steps have been highlighted. Do this, do that, and then do this. Um, and that just provides that scaffold for the students and the next step. There is an alternative to, uh, to this, which is a, a subtle difference and this is called faded guidance so again we would start with a worked example we would establish the process of how to do something and pick in the features with the students and then plan a sequence of tasks that have more to do each time for the student but the final task would have no scaffold at all so here's some examples so work example on the left hand side the fill in the missing part section is so there's only one feature that the students have to work on before they then move on and do increasingly more difficult um, tasks. Here's another uh, physics example. So at the top left hand corner, uh, the teacher has drawn out what the answer is. And all the students had to do was convert the, the measurement into the force. So it was just the last step of maybe it's a four or five step process that the students had to do. Uh, the next one, the students had to measure the line, work out how long it was themselves, and then convert. The third step, the students had to draw the line in themselves and then measure and then convert into the units and increasingly got to the final section where they had to draw the entire parallel around themselves to work out an answer. This can be done in writing. So in the top left-hand corner, there's a model paragraph on melting with all the detail I would wish to discuss, both in terms of the technical terms of writing, but also the content I'm trying to teach. The next step down was simply a gap fill exercise. Uh, and, and you know, compared to the previous writing example I, I'd given, this is much more focused on the scientific content rather than the process of writing like a scientist. Um, and both are okay. Next one was just simply a set of um, sentence starters to get the students going. And then that final step is just simply a title and a, the expectation that they can use the previous examples to write in detail about that content. So in summary, we should start by planning examples that have the features in that work that you wish the students to learn. We also need to provide multiple examples that increase in complexity to reinforce those ideas. Uh, it's best to allow students to unpick the qualities of the work you wish them to emulate, and then us as teachers turn them into a framework or guidance to then complete subsequent tasks successfully. And then we've got a teaching choice to make 
Do we just get the students to simply practice using that framework provided, or do we provide some form of faded guidance to take them through those steps, maybe it's a little bit more slowly? Okay, folks, there will be a little survey to complete at the end of this, uh, so please follow the link. Thanks now, bye.